You are sick and tired of the daily commute, you want to make more money, and you've seen a few ads from a few boot camps that told you, hey, becoming a web developer is the thing. And I completely agree with them. But how do you go about this? Because there is so much information out there and it takes such a lot of like mental power to figure out what is the thing that you should be doing to go from zero to hero in the shortest amount possible, right? And again, before we start this, like the short amount possible can be very different from person to person, okay? For some people it might take three months, for some it might take six, for some nine, for some one year. But no matter what, I believe that anyone can become a web developer and I really believe anyone can make six figures no matter where you are in the world because right now we have the internet and we have no borders. So if you are smart about it and intentional, you can create whatever career you want from wherever you are in the world, okay? So let's get started. Now, before we even start, we need to define what a web developer is or what a web developer does because if we don't know what this is then we cannot reverse engineer the process okay so a web developer is someone that is making web applications not websites and it's not someone that knows how to design okay so there is this thing that oh i'm a web designer right so i'm a web developer no you're not you are a designer that makes designs for the web okay so you don't need to be a designer okay boom let's push that out of the way we have two things left why is a web developer making applications and not websites because websites are supposed to be like presentational things like for example my website is just a presentation websites and web apps are done with the same technologies they are made with the same technologies but the intent behind this technology or the way we are using that technology is slightly different i would say actually very very different okay so you don't need to make websites you can make websites but you don't have to make them okay especially if you want to make the good money so now we are left with web apps what is a web app for example youtube is a web app facebook website is a web app twitter is a web app zapier is a web app uh, Pinterest is a web app. So all these websites that have like a ton of features like login, sign up, all this stuff, you know, everything that seems like it's moving in some way, it has some sort of like advanced functionality, it is a web app. And there are a bunch of web apps out there, not just the ones that you are used to, okay, not just YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, not just those, but there are SaaS applications, okay, so softwares for businesses. If you are a regular consumer, maybe you are not using that many applications, but there are businesses like myself, which I'm using a bunch of SaaS applications from active campaign to send emails to people that are on my web uh, wait list or whatever, websites where I put my program or et cetera, et cetera. So there are a bunch of web applications out there and there is a very, very high demand for people that are capable to create applications, okay? Create applications from scratch, improve existing applications, and then fix existing applications. So now that we know exactly what a web developer is, what is the stuff that you actually need to learn? So if you want to become a front-end developer, you need to learn front-end technologies. If you wanna become a back-end developer, you need to learn back-end technologies. If you wanna be both, you have to learn both of them, okay? But that means you'll be not so skilled on front end and not so skilled on the back end, right? So you cannot be a jack of all trades and master of all of them. You'll know a little bit from everything, okay? So now it really depends on you what route you wanna take. But from my recent experience, I have realized that you have to choose something where you'll be 80% good at and then 20% knowledgeable at, okay? so. For example, if you want to become a full stack developer, you can be front end oriented, which I think it's the way you should go, where you understand the front end pretty well and you are relatively confident in it, but then you know a little bit of back end, maybe setting up a web server and whatnot, hooking up to a database, deploying an application, like very, very basic stuff that can be learned in a few days but at least you should know of them, okay? But then if you focus 100% on the front end, from my recent experience in the job market, is that people want developers to be knowledgeable of, okay? You wanna know a little bit of, you don't wanna be an expert on it, but you wanna know of it, if that makes sense. 50-50, it's almost impossible and I don't recommend it because you'll be like terrible at both of them. Choose one area and become really good at it. So what is the tech stack that I'm gonna recommend to you based on my current research from the job market. 
Well, on the front end, you need React, Next.js, Redux, style components or, or Tailwind UI, that should be like at the end. Some charting library, you can look into charges or recharts. You can note these things down as I'm speaking or you can save this video and watch it later once you are there, if you're not there yet. So this would be like the things on the front end. And then on the back end, I noticed that you need to know Node.js, Express, Postgres. And for both of these front end and the back end, you need to know Docker a little bit, just setting up things. And you also need to know AWS so you can host your front end and server somewhere. If these keywords like throw you off, I understand, I can completely understand how overwhelming this has to be for a beginner like you. But this is the state of front-end development, web development, back-end development in 2022, 2023 and beyond, okay? So until now, the market was kind of at a junior level. Everyone was kind of figuring things out. What is the right thing to do for this? What is the right thing to do for this, etc., etc. People were figuring things out, okay? But now it seems like things started to mature a little bit and there are some staple technologies that you should be learning. And again, I have realized this in the past couple of months and that's why I'm telling you this. These are the technologies that I believe you should be learning. Should you be starting with these things? No, that's the end goal, understanding all these pieces, how they actually fit together. But if you are a complete beginner, you need to know JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. These are your, you know, bread and butter, if that makes sense, because you cannot do any of those things if you are bad or weak at these three basic things. Like, you need to understand that if you get to this point where you know all those technologies, that will be your, your peak. And if you really master them, and if you are really confident in those technologies, then you can make a lot of money, six figures or more. You can work remotely, you can, like your life is gonna change dramatically if you do these things, okay? If you are in a non-tech job and if you learn all these things, your life is gonna change dramatically. Like I can guarantee you that. But in order to have that peak where you make a lot of money, where you have safety, stability, you are like solid, okay? You are grounded in your, in your skills, in your powers, then you need to have a strong foundation. You cannot have, you know, a, a high peak if you don't have a strong foundation. Like if you know the Burj Khalifa from Dubai, it's like the tallest building in the world. It has almost like, it's like one kilometer, almost one kilometer tall. Imagine the foundation of that building. It must be huge. So the higher you wanna go, the thicker and deeper your foundation has to be. If you wanna have like a solid foundation, then you need to learn how to use your HTML and CSS properly, you know? You need to be able to create any layout you see. I've made a bunch of videos talking about this. You need to be able to like, on a finger snap, I cannot do the sound yet, this is my on, on my 2023 list. You need to be able to like look at the website, look at the web app and then like instantly break it down into pieces and then be able to recreate it with HTML and CSS. Then you go into JavaScript, you need to understand your array methods, your object methods, understand why you need arrays, why you need loops. All these things, you know, how document query selector is gonna help you, you know, like changing elements on the screen, creating new elements on demand and so on and so forth. And then once you're good with that, once you can create some basic applications that are made for your level, then you can level up, add a new technology. Because if you have just these three basic skills, HTML, CSS and JavaScript, whenever you wanna create something complex, you'll be having a bottleneck. And then whenever you have a bottleneck, you have to reach for the next thing. And in this case, for this example specifically, the next thing is React. So you learn React. Now you'll be playing around with React quite a lot and then you'll be creating like some interesting applications in an easier way, in a simpler way. But then you'll be soon bottleneck because you can only create one page. So then you learn about router. Now you understand, okay, if I have a router, I can do this and this and this. Now you have this router set up and you try to create something even more complex. And then what's gonna happen? You'll have a problem with your state management. So you add Redux and so on and so forth. Throughout this entire journey, you'll be capped by your front end. So you have to learn a bit of backend. Then you try to learn a bit of backend and you figure out, okay, I need to learn databases. So you understand how that works, blah, blah, blah. And then you put them together and then you figure out the bridge between them and so on and so forth. That's how the learning process works and you need to be able to like break it down and understand what is good from each individual technology that you need to learn. And then you have to be intentional about it and learn it and attack it straight away. One of the biggest things that I've seen with people in general is that whenever they have one missing link, something is not clicking for them, they actually 
move on and they try to learn something new. It's like putting some uh, trash under the rug, thinking that that's how they avoid it by, you know, uh, they avoid the, how can I say, the failure by avoiding it. But in reality, if you avoid that failure, instead of fixing it, that failure is gonna come and bite you in the ass later. And you know what's gonna happen? You'll have a bottleneck because your skill set are is bottlenecked by one of these things that you forgot to mention. And that's why it's important to actually understand what is the purpose of each technology and don't just learn it like because someone told you, like because I've told you or because some other coding influencer told you. You need to make sure that you understand first why do we need something in the first place? Don't be a code monkey and don't just learn things randomly because people are telling you, do your own research because this is also gonna pay off massively in an interview, right? You have an interview and then, they, then people will ask you, why did you choose this? Well, because of this and this and this, I've done my research, right? So that comes across like you are someone that is diligent about what they're doing and not just following random Udemy courses, you know? Again, this is a very simple process. It's not easy, but it's simple, especially like after doing this for many years, I can see from above, you know, like what are the bottlenecks and what are potential solution or solutions for each bottleneck whenever you're trying to make a transition from like newbie to someone that works in tech and makes a lot of money. So there are a bunch of bottlenecks that can be fixed at every single step. If you don't work with me, you need to figure out how to solve this by yourself. Okay, so you have to find out communities or some mentor or something like that. And then those people or those resources might help you overcome your bottleneck, right? But you need to just accept that it's gonna take some time. Sometimes you'll feel stupid, okay? And that's okay. It's not because you are inherently stupid. You might be, but I don't know. I just assume like the majority of people are not stupid. But the thing that you are trying to learn is difficult, right? So do not confuse you being stupid with the thing being difficult. If the thing is difficult, it's normal. It's supposed to be difficult. Not everyone should be making six figures, you know, even though anyone can make six figures, not everyone will do because a lot of people are lazy. They don't want to put in the effort. They're not willing to go through the struggles and so on and so forth. But if you pull yourself up and you understand that you actually love this thing and you actually want to be a part of this whole thing, then you can absolutely do it. And then with time and with patience and with effort, you'll absolutely crush it. So that's the video for today. That's how you become a web developer in the next few years. I hope you liked this video. If you did, like it. If you are not subscribed, subscribe. And then if you want to work with me directly, you can join the waitlist. I'm going to open a few spaces soon. So if you want to be part of what I do, part of my mentorship program, then apply. I'll send you a few emails before so you can be prepared and we can have a chat and see if we are the right fit for each other. Until next time, yours truly, Tristan. This was a fucking good one.